everyone and welcome to this month's capacity building webinar uh, as part of our capacity building webinar series. Um, we've got quite a few of you logged in and some are in the process of logging in, but we can get through some of our introductory logistics things first. Uh, the person you're hearing right now, I think all of you have met me, uh, April Reardon with Habitat Minnesota. I am the capacity building director here. And uh, this is a monthly web conference that we have been hosting now. This Now we're in our second year. We started in January of 2013. Um, the web conferences are always the last Wednesday of each month. Um, so here we are today doing Keystone 201 with Larry Mancini. And then um, next month, just so you all know, I don't have it all set up yet, but um, we've got some topics that are building upon our OLE conference. And so i um, hoping to, we have Eric Kretzinger, uh, the ED at the Boone County Habitat affiliate in Iowa, signed on for April to talk some more about the Helping Hands and Rock the Block program that he has there so we can go a little deeper. Um, and I know Molly's working on flushing that out with some other panelists as well, um, building upon some of the family selection and support topics for May um, and lots of other ideas of things that we can bring to you. So uh, keep an eye out for those in your Lena. We do record each one of the sessions and post those on a YouTube channel, Habitat Minnesota webinars. So you can go back and see what's already been offered, um, share those with your new staff, volunteers, just to review, share them with your board members. Uh, I do send a link to the slides and any other resources that pop up uh, via email after the web conference as well. So just so you know, you get that and the link to the recording. Uh, we do have some new people who maybe haven't done webinars with us before. It must be the topic that's drawing people out. But um, really, the idea here is to think is to make this interactive. And so Larry has really customized the session based upon who's registered. He looked to see um, what are you using in Keystone. Um, I shared all of the questions that you submitted to me, um, but I'm sure as we get into it, other questions will come up as well. And so we want you to be able to participate and do that. And so we're a small enough group that you can just raise your hand and I can unmute you. So if you are on the phone or have a microphone either built into your computer or maybe you're wearing a headset, uh, it's great to unmute you and just hear your voice and have you talk with us and ask your question or make any comments. Um, you can also type questions into your control panel. So, oopsies. Uh, so you should have a question or control panel like this. And so you could um, type right into there. And I'll be monitoring those and I can share those with Larry and I'll try to interrupt and, and do that for him, um, but we do hope that you will participate. I have uh, just a couple of questions then, um, some polls uh, that help me. And so knowing that, I'm gonna ask, how are you planning to participate today? Sort of, I am gonna talk on the phone and also type using the chat panel. Maybe you have a microphone and a headset. Maybe you're not able, you don't have the ability to talk with us or you just wanna chat. Um, but it's also really helpful to know if you're just planning to listen only. You know, maybe you're not online, maybe you're doing something else and need to control some background noise, but that helps us. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, here, and I'll share this so Larry can see it then too. So it looks like we've got Larry, some, a good number. So it looks like we've got some, a good number. Let's see, it might have to... I was getting some feedback there. That might be just from Larry. Larry, I'm just going to mute you just for a second. Um, anyway, so it looks like we've got plenty of people who are able to talk with us and some good chat options, a few people who might just be listening only. So we should be able to be very interactive. Um, I just have one more uh, poll for you that helps me in just tracking attendance for our webinars. And it's just how many attendees are participating. Sometimes 
multiple staff from an affiliate or staff and volunteers participate together. And so it's helpful for me to know if more than one person is um, sitting with you today. So how many attendees, including yourself, are participating? Almost there. Okay, I'm gonna stop that. No, that's great. So um, looks like a few of you have um, some buddies with you today. So that's, that's nice and uh, hopefully you'll all participate then as well. If you want to chat in and let me know, hey, we've got um, who is participating with you, that would be great if you have more than one. Okay, so without further ado there, I will introduce our presenter today. So Larry Mancini is currently the president of More Than Data. I think many of you are already familiar with Larry. He's really here by request from all of you who said, could we please get Larry to come? And we, um, he wanted to come and was interested in coming to our conference, but was in China, so couldn't make it then. But um, we're definitely going to um, just start with this webinar. And if there are more questions and more things that um, that we don't get to today, Larry has already said he'd be willing to do this um, again or even on a regular basis just to help you all maximize the usage of Keystone at your affiliates. So. At this point, I'm going to change the presenter and let Larry take over. I know I have a couple questions that I'll get to, but uh, here we go. I'm going to switch over to you, Larry. Great. Thank you, April. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show my screen. I'm, I'm new to uh, this webinar service. We, we use a little slightly different one at More Than Data, so hopefully I won't stumble around too much. Uh, one of the things uh, that I wanted to get off at the very beginning was is that April was very kind to uh, sample and get some information from you as to what are the kind of questions you had about Keystone. Uh, I offered originally to pretty much not have it be just a Keystone seminar, but in reality all the questions were so Keystone specific that I thought it was better to go ahead and answer them specifically instead of try to generalize that. Uh, so what I thought I would do is there were seven questions, and I'm going to work through the first six just very quickly because they're pretty easy to answer. And then the last couple ones are actually going to be my presentation where I'll show you a lot more than just a simple yes or no answer, if, that's, if that works for everybody. Okay, uh, access database. Do you need professional office to be able to run it? And the answer is yes, and you can get it from TechSoup for $32. So uh, one of the advantages of Keystone is, is that it really is designed for nonprofits, understanding that nonprofits can get things like Office Professional from TechSoup at a very, very reasonable price. Uh, is Keystone web-based now? And the answer is no, but you can run Keystone in any uh, platform, any Microsoft platform variety, and so you can run it in a hosted service or you can run it on a server with remote desktop, and it looks like it's web-based. Uh, even though in technically it is not web-based, it's really server-based. But uh, we have uh, affiliates that uh, run Keystone in any one of seven different platform formats. Uh, it, it'll run from anything from just a simple one computer on itself all the way up to a hosted service on a remote server with 20, 30 people uh, simultaneously using Keystone. Uh, pricing of Keystone depends on the number of contacts, number of mortgages, etc. And that's true. Uh, basically, we switched from just having a flat rate uh, for many, many years. We were a very flat rate, uh, and we found that we really were not generating enough revenues to replace ourselves to have a continuing process of keeping Keystone alive for the future. Uh, Keystone is over 18 years old and obviously is very mature, very capable. Uh, but frankly, our uh, founders, both um, uh, Mel and Nancy, were basically getting quite uh, up in years, and so we needed to raise our prices to uh, be able to have professional developers continue the wonderful work that Mel and Nancy had done. So we went to a value-based pricing methodology by which uh, small affiliates like my affiliate in Townsend County and a lot of yours in, in Minnesota still only pay a flat $200 fee. But for very large affiliates, we have affiliates that run 1,500 mortgages on Keystone, and we just didn't think it was fair 
that they pay $200 and my little affiliate only paid $200. So we put it on a value-based pricing and frankly, all of our customers are very happy with it because the bigger guys, they demand more things and they want more things done and heavier support. So it's worked out for everybody. Uh, I looked at uh, Keystone years ago and uh, you know, what, which much has changed? And the, and the answer is, is we're continually always improving and changing Keystone. Uh, it is you know, close to 18 years old, so there's an awful lot of capabilities in Keystone that is still there. And we always add new features and new capabilities as, as the environment in which an affiliate runs changes. Uh, one of the things that we are just the process of rolling out is our new web access based volunteer self registration, which is in beta with four or five of our customers. And that's really the biggest change that we've made in the last couple of years. Uh, next question was tell us how a smart way to distinguish between groups, affiliates. I think the person meant affiliations and categories. And this is, this is a great question. Uh, but it's really it would take probably at least a good hour to go through. So if that person is still interested, just send me an email and I'll discuss it with you privately. <coughs> question six was I think answered by or a uh, question by the same person since they used the term what is a smart way. And that's going to be part of my presentation is how to use fund FRAs for fundraising activities. That's going to be in my presentation. And then Sandra Erpling. Uh, Erpling basically asked the questions, what is the advantage of setting up mortgage information in Keystone? And so those are going to be the two most important part of, of my presentation going forward. So hey, if I don't have any questions on those, I'm going to go ahead and uh, right. go ahead. Larry, there is another question. Um, can the state, have any yep, can the data or the program be saved on Office 365? Uh, Okay, that's a, a great question and a difficult question again. Office 365 is a web, is, excuse me, is a cloud-based office service. 365 does not have access as part of that component. So you still have to have access 2012, but yes, uh, it will interface with Office 2012 with Office 360. It's a kind of a kludgy arrangement and I would not uh, recommend it to anybody unless they're really, really interested in it. In my opinion, Office 365 has got a long way to go before it can replace Office 2012. So uh, we have customers that are on it that way and not all of them are as happy as they'd like to be and it's really not our fault. It has everything to do with Microsoft being just a little too aggressive in their, in their uh, process. Okay. Does anybody so have follow-up questions and... about any of those topics? Looks like Pat says thanks. That must have been a good answer. This would be a good time to jump yeah, okay. in on those other questions if you have them. Just raise your hand or type okay. them in at any time. Okay. So basically, I'm going to start my presentation on my slides. And basically, I'm going to talk a little bit about Keystone, the foundation, the uses. And then I'm going to answer the question, why put my mortgages in Keystone? Uh, and then the second question was discussion of FRAs, and I included it in categories because a lot of people get FRAs and categories confused. So I'm going to spend a, a little bit of time on each one of those, and hopefully it will generate some questions. Uh, kind of in a background basis is Keystone can be used for a wide variety of things. Keystone was designed to basically be the uh, Swiss Army knife for systems that affiliate uh, uses. And frankly, you shouldn't have to have any other software except a general ledger system like uh, QuickBooks, which Keystone interfaces to. So you can see all the different things that you can use Keystone for. Now, most of these things, not every affiliate will use everything. So you kind of have to pick and choose what's the most important for you. But the typically three biggest ones are the mortgage management, the donor management and your volunteer management, the three primary ones. As I said, Keystone is uh, based on Microsoft platform. So you do have to have Microsoft access. It can be 2007, 2010, or 2012. It really doesn't matter. Uh, each one of them have a, a little bit extra features, but the differences between the different offices is really just a way for Microsoft to make additional revenues. And 
and my favorite still is Office 2007. So if you're running seven, I wouldn't really wouldn't jump to spending more money to, to get onto ten or twelve. But anyway, it does require Microsoft Access Office Professional. Uh, there is an interface between Keystone and QuickBooks. Uh, and in reality, when you get into this discussion about the mortgages, uh, basically you need to look at Keystone as being the subsidiary ledger for your mortgages. And then in QuickBooks, you basically just have summary information. Let's say you have 10 mortgages in Keystone. Basically, you're going to have each mortgage is a separate account with all the different transactions and ins and outs and expenses, etc., going in. In QuickBooks, all you're going to have in your QuickBooks file is the mortgage outstanding total balance of all your mortgages and the total balance of your escrow for all of your mortgages. Keystone keeps the detail and it just simplifies your QuickBooks processing. Now obviously Keystone is interfaced with all of the office applications. It uses Outlook for its email processing. You can always export a report into Word. You can export into Excel and a PDF writer is built into Keystone now so that you can always create a report and then email it out to your different constituents. Keystone is designed by which everybody in the affiliate uses Keystone for what their needs are. It isn't, it shouldn't be just one application that sits in the back office and is used by the accounting staff to manage the mortgages. It should be used by your volunteer coordinator, your development director, family selection support, obviously your mortgages are there, and the executive director should use it for running reports and analysis, etc. So you should try to encourage everybody in, in the affiliate to have Keystone installed on their machine and accessing the central, the, central, the central database. We do not charge more per each user that accesses Keystone, so it's all a flat fee. We have affiliates that have 40 or 50 users that access Keystone in a central database. Now there are two main applications. The red side has to do with the properties, the families, the mortgages, and on the blue side has to do with contacts, donors, and volunteers. The reason why I bring this up is that Keystone has extensive uh, security measures built in by which you can protect the partner family information from it from everybody else looking at it. So if you have the social security number stored for your partner families, only the partner family organization or maybe your accounting people are accessing that information. Your volunteer coordinator, your development coordinator, those type of things, people do not need to get into information. So there's a robust security system in that allows you to share what you need with each different party. Okay, why put my mortgages into Keystone? First of all, Keystone was designed to handle mortgages that are, are zero interest, which are habitat for humanity type. So it is specifically designed so it works effectively. Posting a payment is very fast and easy. It automatically allocates the difference between principal, escrow, and any late fees, etc. So it really becomes very quick, and it's also much more effective. Just a second, I'm getting a, a computer overload on my computer, so I, <coughs> I must be chewing up some <coughs> memory. <coughs> April, are you still there okay? Uh, yep, I was just muted. April? I, hello, yep, I'm here. Okay, I tried. Uh, my computer changed a little bit. I just didn't want to make sure that I dropped the line. Okay. Oh, so yep, no, you're here. Fast. Your audio okay. every now and then gets a little muffled. I don't know if it's like you're turning your head away from the mic or something, but. I'll try to not do that. A little yeah. bit is that it could be the internet connection is getting a little tangled, but I'll try to. And okay. I'll also try it's to just every now. I mean, I think it, it hasn't been a big deal. Okay. But, okay. Uh, an important part of any mortgage servicing is delinqu delinquency management. And again, Keystone was built to manage the delinquency. It makes it easy. The letters are automatically generated. So it really, the whole process of managing your and, and servicing your mortgages really becomes easy and effortless instead of trying to make either QuickBooks or Excel, which are typically two other areas that are used by the mortgage management. 
but it, it really doesn't work very effectively like it can in Keystone. All the processing is standardized and is approved by Habitat for Humanity International. I think most of you recognize that Keystone used to be an international product. Uh, we took it back, uh, the users did in 2006, but all of the standardization and all the processing is still approved by international. There are payment coupons that are available. An annual statement is available with the touch of a button. You don't have to create any kind of an annual statement for your homeowners. And escrow analysis is almost really built in. Uh, my support staff doesn't like me to say it's at the touch of a button because it does take a little bit of work. But what can be a two or three day exercise if you're using Excel or QuickBooks ends up being a 30 minute exercise in Keystone. One of the important parts is, is that if you have your mortgages in Keystone, you can also subscribe with more than data to do credit reporting for those mortgages. And it's important for your, for your homeowners that they, if they actually make their payments on time and are your, your reliable homeowners, that they get good credit ratings. So by not having some access to report the credit for their timely uh, payments, uh, is really a disservice to your uh, partner family. So that's something that, that you should probably try to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and demo uh, the key, Keystone for just a few minutes on that part. There's a there's one uh, question, yeah. Larry. Go ahead. Uh, if a bank services, uh, uh, if a bank, oh, we got a little. Uh, if a bank services our mortgages and does all those things mentioned, is there still a reason for us to double track the same info in Keystone? Well, that's a great question. Uh, and I, I do say that there are a, quite a few, uh, we, we call that shadow posting. And there are quite a few affiliates that find that shadow posting works very well with them. The question is, is uh, why do you have the bank do it? and then shadow the posting, you're really doing du duplicate work. But they find that Keystone is so effective in the follow-up for the delinquency that they still think that the shadow posting and the shadowing is better than not doing it at all. So uh, it, it, the answer is yes, there is some value to it, but the point is is why, and, and a lot of times the affiliates get that done for free for a bank, and I, it's really hard to say to somebody that if you're getting it done for free and it works, uh, you know, why, why mess with it? If it's free and it doesn't work, then you need to think through, is there a better way of doing it? Okay, hopefully that answers that question. If not, I can still talk about it a little bit more. Now I'm going to just click on the mortgage uh, window and I'm going to just make one simple payment uh, to Keystone. Uh, I'm going to go to, <coughs> excuse me, to the Mayfield account and you can see that uh, it is late in the month and the Mayfield normally has a payment of 235 because they haven't made a payment this month the late fee of ten dollars is being assessed and that's something that you can set up in Keystone and so <coughs> excuse me I'm just going to go ahead and make a payment you just basically process there and it automatically posts everything for you now, if the check came in and it was 245, then you're done. You basically just close it. If they actually made the payment, it was 235, and they were trying to talk you out of the fact of the late fee, then you may adjust this to 235, and you go through. Excuse me, and you then see how it shorted the uh, principal, and they say no, I want. It's going to short the principal and it's going to put the late fee in it and then you basically close it at that point in time. So it, depending on what the actual amount was, uh, you either just, it's done automatically for you or simply uh, you can go in and adjust it for what it is that you want to try and do. Now that's simple, easy posting. Uh, if you have, if your small affiliate like mine is, we have 15 mortgages, the mortgage processing is maybe a 30 minute uh, activity a, a month. So uh, reality is that it's really a low uh, volume activity. I'm going to go through some of the reports. As I said, and I've got these reports set up in my favorites. If, if uh, you don't know how to set up a report favorite is when you find the report 
you just click on add to my favorites okay so I'm going to go down to the homeowners mortgage summary and this is a report that you can send out to the partner family I'm going to go back down to Marla's because that's the one that we just looked at and I'm going to preview that report and basically this is just a standard report uh, that is sent out typically at the end of the year when you're doing your escrow analysis and basically it, just at the touch of a button it kept track of all the payments escrow what the late fees are what the situation of their late uh, of their escrow balance is now this is a test account and and, uh, and we don't maintain it quite as effectively as we can so you see that they have built up quite a bit of escrow uh, this is their initial debt was 35 they paid off 23 so they have 12 left uh, since they made a payment uh, they're they're showing that they're short the ten dollars because they they only paid the two thirty five and the and the ten dollars wasn't there so it's showing that there is a ten dollar shortage that has to be made up either next month etc and this just shows the, the schedule so this is a, a very easy report uh, if a customer a partner family always says well what's the current status of my mortgage you can always just run this report and mail it out to them etc. Another report that we just added, and this is a new report, uh, really created, uh, and again, I'm going to do it for uh, the same account, and I'm going to do it for uh, for all the long period of time. But this is basically a report that tells you everything that happened with that account since the beginning of the payment. So that if you have a, a partner family that you know is is disgruntled that they don't think that you're handling it correctly or they've got a, a differences of opinion as to what the balances should be. Uh, this is basically a mortgage roll forward account that shows you every transaction that was there from the beginning or you can do it just for a specific date and, and show them how the processing has been done on their account. So there shouldn't be any mystery, you should be able to pretty well figure out everything that's going on with each mortgage. On the mortgage coupons, again, I'm going to quickly just show you how, what a mortgage coupon would look like. Uh, and you can do this for 12 months. We normally uh, would produce coupons, send them out 12 months in advance, and they therefore have a coupon that they can tear off. If you can cut it, there's a, a way of separating those. And basically, they can send their check in or their money order, uh, hopefully not cash through the mail. Uh, but anyway, there's a, a coupon capabilities of uh, including that so that you can manage and make sure that they re remember exactly how much is due and all that type of stuff. Okay? Alrighty, so I'm going to pretty much leave that. Uh, there's a, a delinquency management report. I'll show you that one real quick and I'll just do it for preview for all of them. Again, <coughs> this is my demo account and I haven't really kept it up to date in the last couple of weeks so it is uh, fairly delinquent but this gives you pretty much all the kind of information that you would need to have to give to the board of directors or to sit down with your executive director and talk about what are the things that need to be done for each one of the accounts to try and get them up to date back on track etc okay so, so, so I have any questions at that point in time about the mortgage processing in Keystone it's a very highlight very uh, uh, very high level of uh, presentation and if there's anybody that's interested in taking their mortgages and getting them out of Excel or getting them out of QuickBooks and putting them into Keystone just contact our support organization and they will give you guidance in how to go about doing that okay if you have questions all right again, now just, next just go ahead and type them in and or raise your hand and you can just talk with us I'll wait a second to see if there are any questions coming in. Anything coming in, April? I don't see anything yet. But... Yeah, okay. Well, either I bored everybody to death or I'm answering all the questions. Hopefully, it's going to say Okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me for my cough. While I was in China, I picked up a very deathly cough, and uh, and unfortunately, I didn't have any uh, drugs with me. So I, uh, it was kind of interesting. Oh. Okay. We do have okay. We do have we do have a question. One second. Go ahead. What's the question? There you go, Parker. Hi, Larry. This is Parker Quammen at Goodhue County Habitat. Um, if we are converting mortgages from our current system to to uh, Keystone, 
do you recommend yeah. that we go back in history or we just start with the current mortgage balances and go from there? Just start with your, your balances forward. Have a clean cutoff. Say, okay, uh, March 1st or April 1st or May 1st or June 1st, we're going to switch over. Trying to load the mortgages. You could do it for maybe one mortgage, you know, maybe the one that's only a year old. But trying to go back and recreate that history just causes more problems than it's worth. So our recommendation, and, and again, if you work with our people, they'll, they'll tell you that, is to just start with a line as of that time, load the current balance, uh, principal balance, and a current escrow balance, and getting it set up and going forward. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to turn my attention to fundraising activities. and. Uh, I, I kind of wish, again, Keystone is a mature product and we named uh, fundraising activities clear back a long time ago, I guess maybe when I was a little boy, uh, but I would love to uh, rename that because people tend to think of as fundraising activities having to do with, well, that's about events. Uh, you know, obviously if I have a fundraiser, I'm, I'm going to want to identify that fundraising activity and, and, and track it. Well, actually, fundraising activity codes are really a code that can be applied to every donation, and it should be applied to every donation because it's so easy. It's an automatic uh, collection of information, and it's supposed to capture the motivation of why somebody sent you a, a, a donation. Uh, many times, you know, you may not know, it just, uh, you know, a little bluebird comes in and you get a check for a couple hundred dollars, and <laughs> you may have to have an FRA code called just general donation, but many times they'll give you some indication as to why, uh, why they sent you the donation. Maybe they'll say, oh, we just loved your annual newsletter, and so we sent you this donation. Or maybe they'll say, this is for a memory card. Or maybe they'll say, this, yes, I want to participate in your gala event coming up. For whatever the reasons are, you want to track that information so that you can control where your marketing is, uh, dollars are being spent, how it's generating dollars of uh, donations coming in, etc. So selecting the FRA while posting is easy, and it gives you tremendous report capabilities because you can have a lot more detailed FRA reporting than you have in your P&L. So again, you don't have to bother your accounting staff and saying, well, how are we doing on our donations this week? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you can run your own FRA report and it should provide all the information you need about it. You can also structure your FRA codes at will. You can do them on the fly, like all of a sudden uh, the development organization says, well, we've come up with a new event that we want to have. Well, all you need to do is sit down and create your FRA codes, and then when the donations come in for that, they can automatically be coded to those. Okay, now I'm again going to go back to Keystone and show you. Oops, did the wrong, picked up the wrong item. I meant to get Keystone. Let's get that out of the way, too. Okay. Going back into Keystone. And I'm going to basically just do a uh, development and actually just post a donation. Okay, and I'm going to show you where the FRA code is uh, posted to the donation account, <coughs> and then I'll show you how to create really interesting FRA codes. The uh, Go Webinar is sucking all the memory out of my uh, at computer. Therefore, Keystone is very, very slow. Okay, let's basically just this is our donation, and this is for the Ackerman account. And basically, I've set up some FRA codes, and as you can see on our new version, the FRA codes don't show up yet, even though in, they're in green. The FRA. Now, a DDA, which I'm not going to get into because it's more complicated than just FRAs, but the FRA, if you get that down, you'll have most everything. So I'm going to go ahead and post a $100 check, and I, and I had it for check, to this account. Oops, I, I'm sorry, I went back too far. And you can see that the FRA popped up, okay? 
And so I have set up these different FRA codes as to why I'm, I was, this, this donation may come in. I'm going to say that it's an alternative gift because they said I want a memory card to go out to my sister. It's her birthday and so I'm making this $100 gift in her name. So that's an alternative gift. Just click on that and basically you're done. You're basically done with, uh, with that FRA posting. Okay. Now, <coughs> let's go over to reports and look at what, what the reports would look like for FRAs. And again, I've set it up with my favorites. And here's fundraising activity detail report. And this report is, has a tremendous amount of combinations and permutations. I sat down one day and calculated that if you hit each one of these different radio buttons, that you can actually end up with over 4,000 different report types. Now I'm just going to show you the summary one, and I'm going to show you only the active FRA accounts, and I'm going to do it for this fiscal year, okay? And I'm going to hit preview. Now again, this is just a demo account, and I haven't made hardly any postings. So most of most of the amounts are going to be shown are going to be zero. Okay, but just go along with me that that if we had a bowling tournament, and every time we sold a bowling tournament ticket, we would actually use the the FRA BT bowler. Okay, if it was a bowling tournament sponsor, we would have used the BT sponsor code. Okay. So this gives us the ability to separate those that are bowlers and that we want to next year be able to attract the bowlers to come back to the next bowling tournament and those that are sponsors so that when we send them a letter we say, hey, it was great that you sponsored the bowling tournament last year. Uh, we hope that you'll be able to help us again this year. You know, it's going to be $500 for a lane sponsor and wouldn't you help us out, okay? Uh, another FRA type is a club pledge. Uh, I don't know whether you, any of you use the Carpenter Club, club pledge process or not, but that's all built into Keystone and is possible to identify those donations that come into your Carpenters Club. Here are some different general donation types. This is for alternative gifts, and you can see where that $100 popped up right there. <coughs> These are just some made up. Uh, examples that are fairly common. Uh, down here is where I'm showing that you can actually uh, measure the different kind of restore donations that might be coming in for the in-kind. Keystone tracks both dollars and in-kind, which is very unusual for most, most donor uh, systems. And again, because we know that in-kind donations are a significant process for your, uh, for your affiliate, that's something that you need to have. Okay, do we have any questions? We do have a question. So the question is from Dana, and she says, say I have 12 FRAs. Is there a report where I can get three of those FRA reports and not just one FRA or all 12 FRAs? Yes, you can go back to the same report, and you can pull up the FRA by type, such as like if I just wanted to see the bowling tournament, I could do that one, and I'm basically going to preview that one. And so you can segment it. So there I've only got the bowling tournament one. Uh, you can also, uh, if you say all, you can also go down here and just select the ones that you want to be involved and then preview that and it'll show those two. So yes, there's complete capabilities of selecting just the ones that you want, the ones that you're monitoring and measuring, etc. Also you can set in goals and comparison to your goals. So it's a pretty fabulous, capable way of monitoring and tracking what's going on with your development activities. It's a good question. Okay. <coughs> I'm pretty much finished up with FRAs. Uh, I can show you how to set up an FRA. Uh, I'm going to start over by the affiliate setup. And most people don't see where you can actually set up different FRA types, but you start with the affiliate setup screen.
and you go to your development and here's where you can set up the fundraising activity types okay so if you just like in anything else in Keystone if you want to put in a new type and I'm just going to put in the word new type okay you can put in new type account activity and now that is a FRA type that you can now uh, put categories under okay so I'm going to close that out And here's where you define the details of what goes under each activity type. Okay, this is fundraising activities. And you can see that all the ones that I currently have set up are in here. The bowling tournament, etc. And if you want to add a new one, you can go into add, delete, modify. And you go down to the bottom, and let's say that you want to put in a new type of activity. Okay. And these acknowledgement letters, these are the codes that can be used. Now, in this demo system, I haven't set up any of the acknowledgement letters, but you can have a different acknowledgement letter for each FRA activity. So this is where you can customize the thank you acknowledgements. So if it's a thank you for the bowling tournament, you can put in there, thank you for the bowling tournament. If it's a, a alternative gift, you can say thank you for your alternative gift, etc., etc. So... <coughs> Well, I haven't gone in and customized that for our demo systems. That's obviously something you would want to be able to do. So for new activity type, I'm just going to say it's new activity type 01, and you know, just whatever it is. And this is this is going to be just a sample sample activity. Okay, close out there. Now it's going to bring you over and you say, okay, for this year, what's going to be your goal for this sample activity? And you say, okay, we're going to have a goal of $2,000. Okay. Now it's already going to be made active so that when you come back around and you want to do a donation using that new FRA type and activity, even though it was a made up kind of uh, simple looking uh, activity, I wanted to make it very clear that it's the new one that I set up. And I'm going to post $100 to that new activity. And there it is, sample activity. Now, if you go over to the reports, <coughs> and I'm going to only pull out that activity, show you that you can select on it. And if you want it by detail, I'm going to do it by detail showing that you can actually see who who was it, what account actually sent you that money. Uh, before it was just in total, but now this shows you this is the Ackermans who sent you the $100. So it depends on which detail, whether you want to see the full detail or whether you just want to see the summary information. Again, you got complete control over how you pull reports. All right, we've got a number okay. of questions. What kind of questions do we have <laughs> on fundraising activities? All right, so the first one that I have okay. um, might have just been answered. I'm not sure, but it was, um, how can I get a report? Sorry, I'm going to open up my question panel a little bit better here. <sighs> for an individual okay, to there. see how all of their, <laughs> yep, to, for an individual to see all of their donations for a period of time. Okay, that, no, that one was not answered because oh, okay. you're now switching over from looking at fundraisers to where you're now looking at donors. Okay, okay. so there's a, there's a complete uh, a, a a lot of different reports in which you can see uh, what's going on with a specific donor. Okay, so I'll, again, I'll open up that report, uh, and again, uh, Keystone has over 200 canned reports. 
And as I was explaining on their FRA one, if you take that one canned report, there are 4,000 alternatives of it. So it's kind of mind-boggling all the different things that can be done. But if you go into donors and you want to do uh, you know, actually donations and you want to look at a specific donor, uh, uh, you can do it by category. Yeah, so you want to do it by you want to do it by donors. You can actually look at it all kinds of different ways. Uh, yeah, it's about categories. Uh, donor with single donor donation distribution donors. Hmm. Yeah, I, I should have practiced this one a little bit ahead. This is the one I was looking for. Okay. Again, if you want to look for Ackerman, now you can look at it detail by donation. Uh, you can do it for a period of time. There's always a different uh, calendar. If you want to see it for this fiscal year, you can look at it. Uh, so you can preview that and see the Ackerman account, what's happening with the Ackermans. If you want to do it by uh, summary, by month, you can preview that. So you can see with how they're doing per month, uh, and, and there's there's just many many different ways in which you can do. This. One of the things that people uh, don't look for, and it's kind of hidden there, going on with a specific account. There's a, a report called Profile that has everything that you ever happened with the Ackermans, and so you can preview that. It has not only their donations, and again, this is a, a demo file, so it's not going to have a lot of detail in it, but you can basically see what their donations are, where they have volunteered, the committees that they're involved with, just about everything that you may want to see having to do with the Ackermans. Okay? So there's their history of their donations, and obviously it's two pages. And there's finishing up there's with their activities their profile of activities etc so there's just a wealth of, of information that you can uh, collect and print out for your donors and for your volunteers etc okay. all right I am I'm just gonna take questions in the order that they were received <laughs> so I'm gonna okay. unmute our folks in Douglas County so, hi Kelly okay Hi. Actually, Tudor is the one with the question. So. Okay, great. I knew there were three question. of you. So. <laughs> yeah. My question is, in the categories, you can only be one kind of donor, and we are now yeah. stocking up a restore, and our restore items are donated to us for, like, in kind, and we yes. want to make sh sure that we... Um, don't have them in as a donor because we're not putting a value on that in kind. We just want to track for the uh, name. Yes. So, can what category we'd have to set up a separate category in order to keep no, those? No, 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 no. Do not set up a separate category. Absolutely, do not. Okay. Again, you want to set up an FRA for those donations, even if it's zero amount. You want to track it. That's fine. Okay. Uh, you only the category is what kind of donor are they? They're either an individual, they're a, fu a, a foundation, they're a church, they're uh, a business organization. They're not by the type of donation that you give. So you can only have one donor category, and you don't want to set up a separate category to track the fact that a donor sometimes gives you in-kind restore donations. That's part of the donation process. You would track it by the in-kind selection on your donor record, even if you put a zero value in. I would suggest you put in a value, but I'm not going to. That's that's a hard argument to make in a, over a webinar uh, because it's an internal it's an internal uh, valuation is not given uh, out to the uh, out to the donor so that you can track where you're getting really good donations from. You know, maybe one of your suppliers that gives you an awful lot. So you do not want to set up a separate category. 
Hey, Larry, um, this is Kelly. A follow-up question to that then would be is when we are pulling our reports, what is a special way to do that? Because what I'm seeing is when I am pulling my report and I am possibly doing it incorrectly, but one-time restore donors then are really skewing my numbers as to the fact that we're gathering donors and then we have attrition. And so, you know, I, I want to keep them separate in those reporting functions from, say, my cash donors. I mean, when I'm pulling that report as far as how I am retaining donors, they're really throwing that off a little bit. Yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. I understand that. Uh, it's, it's, that's a sophisticated question that I may need to have some counsel and discussions with you on that. <coughs> <laughs> but the solution is not to set up a different donor category. Okay. Yeah, yeah because that would be something we would be interested in because um, kind of pulling some of those more detailed um, analysis reports is very challenging and time consuming than if, you know, we've got to go in there and pull them out separately. Yeah. The, mo what most affiliates do is they make a, a uh, a, a distinction between a one-time donor that they know they just kind of came by the restore and dumped off stuff and you're not going to see them again versus somebody that you work with that you know that you continually get stuff from and that they don't actually put the casual one-time person even in the keystone at all. Uh, you know, it, that, that's pretty much how, how you it, make uh, that distinction. Yeah, that's I, I understand. I understand. Okay. Yep. So just food for thought. That would be one thing that we're really struggling with in our yeah. functionality on the donor side. If you guys, if you yeah. do connect, you me... yeah, if Douglas County, if you guys do connect with Larry, then would you guys, between the two of you, or, you know, be willing to share what you come up with with everybody yeah, else? Yeah, definitely. Because sure. I think for us, functionality-wise, on the donor side, that's been a big challenge for me. Yeah, it sounds like, management. yeah. There's a lot of different ways you could go about it, or if others on the call on the call here have a different solution yeah. to that issue, do share that yeah, with we'd us. Yeah, we'd love to hear about it. So, all right. Well, hey. I'm gonna what? I'm gonna mute you guys, and then I'm gonna go back to the rest of the questions. But that's that's a good one to noodle on a little bit. Right. Uh, Parker, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you and let you ask your question. The what are VOGS or uh, The question was what are VOGS? I get the services. Uh, basically, and, and this is, uh, again, you have to understand that uh, more than data uh, in the fact that we're uh, not sanctioned, and I don't want to use the word approved, but we're uh, kind of the genesis was coming out of international. We do everything exactly by the letter of the law. Uh, if you have a gala event, and uh, you charge a $100 ticket for the gala event, and you provide beer and wine and dinner at that gala event, the value and goods of the services of that event may be like $50. So that when you're actually taking a donation, maybe it's $100, but you subtract the value of goods and services, so the actual donor amount, donation amount is only $50. A lot of affiliates do not do that. I'm not here to judge how you do it or not, but that's how the IRS says you're supposed to do it. I, 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 am I still on? You are, yes. Uh, well, a follow-up. Uh, here in Minnesota, we have GiveMN, which is, a, which is an online donation service, that, and they charge 4.9% on donations, and I've been using their service, putting their service fee in so, so that the actual money that comes to us is is actually accounted for correctly. Is that is that a reasonable use of the uh, value of goods and services field? I, you know, I I would try to talk you out of that. Um, and and there, there again, that's one of one of those things we may have to kind of arm wrestle offline. Uh, a, a little bit. It depends on who is throwing the receipt. If that online and, and you're not the first one. There's Quite a few, and I don't know whether it's just in Minnesota or quite a few of you doing something very similar. Uh, and, and if that online service gives them a receipt for the full amount, and then you're subtracted that 4.9%, uh, the question is whether you are 
obligated to send out another receipt or not. Hmm. Okay, If you're going to send out another receipt or not, you're really causing problems in that you're showing to the donor that you know they're, they're subtracting 4.9%. Uh, to me, that's just a surface fee that you should absorb. And so in my belief, I think you have justification that if, it's, if you're required to throw the receipt, I'd give them the full value. But that's just me. Yeah, well, we do give them the full value. Um, I mean, in the receipt, but uh, no, as far no, as no, 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 if you're subtracting value goods and services, if the receipt is coming off of Keystone, it does not show the full value. Yeah, I understand. Value. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Parker. Good question. Okay. Uh, we have one that says from Jackie that asks, "Can you demonstrate how to create a new letter for a thank you or donation letter?" That's about a 30, 40 minute session, so I would <laughs> gladly do that. Uh, and and it, let me net down the real trick to it is that we have probably 40 or 50 templates in Keystone. And all a template is, is they're all Word templates, and so all of you know Word very well. That's why we selected the Microsoft platform. The little trick is, is that when you open up that uh, template and you want to modify it and save it with your words in it, uh, Microsoft kind of bends it around and they, Microsoft, when you go to save it, it tries to get you to save the template where Microsoft thinks you should save it. Keystone does not save their templates the same way in which Microsoft does. So you have to manipulate the save as to, uh, if you will, move over to the right folder to put it back into. That is the confusing part of why people get lost trying to simply make up a very easy template letter. Okay, And that's really the only part. The rest of it is it's just Word. But when it tries to save it, it it'll try to save it in the Microsoft template folder, not the Keystone folder. So you have to kind of tell it your boss and um, migrate over to where the Keystone folder is that you want to save it in and then save it in the right folder. Is it possible to show just that part? Would that take a long time? No, no, no it, it, it really is quite a bit more complicated. If it's so it takes 30 or 40 minutes just to do that part. I haven't set anything up. <laughs> ah, okay. I was going to, I'm just wondering if it becomes harder to, no, it, to it, use it. it. Really I mean, is, it, no, it, it really isn't that hard to use, but it's it's I haven't set anything up, and I just moved this file into my demo system, and I could have uh, three different folders with stuff around. So I, instead of me flailing around looking for oh, my sure. folders. Oh, sure. Is there something right, on um, the Keystone no. site no. about that? No? Okay. No, it really isn't. I'd, I'd be glad to demo it to somebody if they want to ask how to do that. But it really, just if you use what I just said, it's really straightforward other than that. Yeah. Well, some of these things, too, if you guys end up connecting, we could always um, set it up where we do a, a call like this, and I could facilitate it, and I can record those, too. So if we work something out, if we go online and want to look at um, that question about the donation or this one about how to create those thank you notes, I mean, we could, those thank you letters, we could absolutely help facilitate some of that, too. Um, great. Pat... Uh, with Steel Wasika says that Beck is a great resource for walking through this process. <laughs> well, Beck, Beck basically, uh, people uh, chastise us for not uh, giving her roses and uh, a bottle of scotch and everything that she needs. Uh, Beck is praised by just about everybody that she really is a hard worker. She's been with us over 20 years. Nice. And she uh, basically is just dedicated to help. Uh, our customers and uh, she works tirelessly at it. Uh, we, we fear the day that we're going to lose back. Luckily she's in her prime of age so we're not uh, we're not worried too much about it but she is a, a, a wonderful asset. And Dana had the suggestion too like we could even set up just another our next webinar and do another one with you Larry and, and go through some of these specific sure. questions so that would be another. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm keeping track of all of your questions and some of those pieces. All of my promises? That, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Okay. Um, it, it sounds like the group. It sounds like the group is pretty involved, and that's that's what I really like is is people who are trying to make Keystone you know fly to another level, and it really has the capabilities, but you do have to understand how to set things up to make it really work effectively. Yeah, um, and I know we have another question here from Pat that she says is for the very end. Um, so just in case other people were wanting to raise your hand, I can unmute you if you have other questions or comments, suggestions for Larry or for the next next time we set up another call with Larry. Pat, I think I'm just going to go ahead and unmute you and let you ask your question. And I know um, we've got a couple other ones, though, too. But Pat, you are unmuted. All right. Hi, Larry. Um, hello, everybody. My question is pretty simple. I was looking at, I've, I've got two monitors, so I've got my keystone up while we're talking to you. And I notice I've got a different version. How do I get mine updated to the one you're working on? Uh, basically, go to our website and download it. It is really important to be on the most current version. Are you on 7.0 versus 7.1? I'm on 7.1, but it doesn't. Yeah. The last okay. three numbers are different. Okay. Yeah, because I'm on a, I'm on the future version. You can't get the newer version. If you have a problem, we can. But see, uh, each time that number goes up. You know, like it's 7.1, 666, 667, 668. Each time it increments one is a new feature. We haven't okay. released anything new after 7.1. Uh, we obviously are getting ready to do 7.2, which is what you're looking at right now, and that will be released. And I can't make a promise on it because my technical people tell me one thing and then it ends up being something different. But uh, hopefully in the next... 60 days we'll have a 7.2 rolling out. There isn't significant difference between 7.1 7.2. Okay, okay, I was just curious. That's right, that's a good All point right. to look at. Great, thank you. Thanks, Pat. Okay, I'm going again in the order in which they are received, so I'm going to unmute our Douglas County group again. Oh, you guys have yourselves muted. So if you can unmute yourselves, you're welcome to ask your question. There we go. Oh, this is Kelly. Um, just a quick question, Larry, uh, what the best approach is. I know that even over the course of the three years that I've been with the affiliate, Keystone has updated um, with more functions that are going to be helpful to us. Um, but the way we have it set up from earlier, when those functioning and reporting weren't available, really has undermined how we're using it now. Is yep. there a best approach for us working with you to set up a time really to just specifically ask some of these questions and say, here's our struggles, we're not figuring out on our own what's the best way to do it, or, you know, we just, we've gone through manuals, some of it we're just not getting. But clearly you have the capacity <laughs> to do some of what we're looking at, and it's just not, you know, we're, we're struggling with some of that a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 100%. Let me answer that in a very comprehensive way. First of all, uh, and, and I know that Kelly would like to have everything come back through her, but but you can set up a what we call an orientation webinar with me at any time by just simply saying we need to tune up and we need to go through just like we're doing here, except I'm going to be looking at your database and we're going to be talking about it specifically, which I can't do with a group. The okay. second thing is, the second point is, is that uh, we recognize uh, that a lot of our customers, we have customers that have been with us for 16, 17, 18 years. And their databases have been restructured about four times by, you know, a new ED and a new development director came in, and I call it the zigzag uh, management process where if they've got their database so clobbered up they can't get a report out if they pray to God. Okay, So we came, we came up with a whole bunch of tools that are really in 7.1 which allows you to consolidate FRAs, to consolidate categories, to edit your categories, to get that all cleaned up. If you don't have your database restructured, trying to get the information out in the reports is almost impossible. Now. It is a complicated process, and so for the last year, we have been called. We've been. I have been running what is called 
the database cleanup boot camp. Okay, this is six. This is a seminar series of six one-hour sessions, one day or one hour a week for six weeks in a row to go through all of the cleanup work that you need to do to get your Keystone to run at a high profile. Now we have been doing this pretty much on a selected basis that we started with our accounts that have 50,000 records in them, not 5,000 or 3,000, which some of you may be in, but the ones that were at 50,000 were in such desperate need, we were working with them, if you will, in a private way moving down. Yep. I hope that this summer that we're going to actually have a, a web series that will be published on our website and you can sign up for it. But if, if that's something you want to do, I would suggest we do an orientation session first, and then if you think you need the full boot camp capabilities, I'll schedule you into the next boot camp. It's all included. There is no additional fee, so it's something you should do if you're willing to put the effort in to clean it up. Great. Sounds good. I appreciate that feedback. That's great. And I, I do not need to be involved in all of your, you know, one-to-one -one support. That's one of the great parts about Keystone is that that is available to you. I just, right. I offer it only if it's useful to record or to have, um, be able to share both screens. Yeah, that's all. Uh, we have another question. Parker wants us, wants you to say a little bit about DDAs. Okay. Uh, DDAs is something I wish we never put in the Keystone. <laughs> 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 and what a DDA was supposed to do, and it does work if you're very careful. A DDA is like a secondary FRA. Okay, envision that. Uh, maybe your FRA is, to, you want to track the fact that you're getting a donation from your annual uh, newsletter that you send out. But in the annual newsletter, you give the donor a selection of three different things that you may want them to, that they can donate to. One might be, uh, you know, an annual giving program. One might be to... Uh, uh, alternative gifts. One might be to, you know, some special need that you have set up. So the FRA would be the annual newsletter, and then you could have a subset on the DDA, which was the directed, dire, uh, uh, directed donation, and you could also break that out. The problem is, is that people get confused with it, and they kind of double count. So you really have to be careful when you're using the DDA report. I argued against putting it in. I think it's too complicated. Okay. I just put a little plea out to see if we could get some more questions. We've got actually at this point about seven minutes left in our scheduled time, but um, it's okay if we end early, but if you have more questions, go ahead and enter them. Um, I'll talk with Larry yeah, about scheduling additional sessions to, to focus on some of those specific issues that have come uh, up. Uh, Kelly, if, if we have a couple of minutes, I would like to show that uh, volunteer thing, which I, I said it yeah, that'd be great. a little bit when I do it, since I have the extra time. Uh, I, I wasn't sure we were going to have the time, so I'm going to basically go to volunteers, and this has to do with post our volunteer. I'm hoping that most of you all see the value in posting the hours of volunteers. Uh, some affiliates don't do it, but if you do it, uh, there are two different screens. The one is the regular volunteer screen, but then there's a special screen over here which is more effective for actually posting of hours. Okay? <coughs> so I'm going to demo that screen just a little bit because there's some kind of interesting capabilities that you may not see automatically. Okay. First thing is, and, the, and my demo thing has not been set up yet, so I'm going to set it up as March 29th. So if that's the date that's ahead of time. So i got to do one that's not ahead of time. Uh, I'm going to do this with Saturday 22nd, okay? And it's going to be for house construction, and it's going to be for the 105 Opal Road build, okay? Now, this is all pretty standard, and it does it very fast, that you can put a person in, and I don't, I, since this is my, let's say it's it's Diane Ackerman, and basically Diane is 
uh, only has 6.7 hours that she put in on the build site that's coming in on the timesheet. <coughs> okay, so it's very fast and very effective. Now, uh, let's say that uh, Chastity Collier comes in, and Chastity basically puts in 5.6 hours. Okay, now, can you see the distinction that Chastity has kind of a rose colored and Diane is kind of a blue colored? Okay, the reason is is that Chastity has an F beside her name, which means that she's a partner family. Okay, so when you use this and post it to that, those 5.6 hours are going automatically over to her sweat equity account. Okay, now let's say that Diane Ackerman is really Chastity's sister and that your affiliate allows you to donate the hour, the volunteer hours for the sweat equity. You basically put your uh, uh, mouse right on the Diane Ackerman and then you come down here and you say, well, she's actually going to donate hers to where's uh, uh, Chastity. Okay, so now Diane Ackerman's 6.7 hours is going to show up on Diane uh, Chastity Collier's sweat equity. So that's the part that I wanted to show. A lot of people don't understand what this little work for down here thing is for, but it basically allows you to allocate and move the volunteer hours over to sweat equity depending upon whether your policy allows you to do that or not. A couple of other things is that you can see these screens. If, if you can see that this uh, line around Diane Ackerman is a dark blue. Uh, that's basically what we call our fast path pro. Uh, if you double click on that, it's going to take you over to Diane Ackerman's volunteer record. So wherever you see those little blue lines, basically if you double click in it, it will take you to the root record. Okay, and if you're not using that, you'll find that to be a very effective. Uh, migration tool of moving around within Keystone without having to close the screen and go over to another screen. Okay, so you can see it will return you, and you come right back to the screen at which you were before. If somebody is a volunteer and a donor, do you have to set them up separately? No, no, no. You have one one account. You have one Basically, account, you and then you can okay. By category, you have a, a volunteer category which you add to it, so. No, you only have them in the database once, and they can have 20, 30 different categories. And the volunteers and donors are not just the one category or a couple of categories. There would be all kinds of interesting categories. Okay. Okay. Any, Any questions last on... questions? Yeah. Feel free to just raise your hand if you want. I can unmute you. <laughs> or... We can say thank you and look forward to more sessions with Larry so that you can get all of your questions answered and maximize the opportunity and the potential of this tool. It's fantastic. Looks like we might be good. Thank you so much, Larry. I hope your cough gets better. I hope so too, and I apologize for the coughing during the session. Oh, no. I mean, I think we all just feel bad for you. Um, Pat says thanks. She always sees and learns something new when going through this program. Program. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. I usually stay online just for a little.